Salutation, spooks, spirits, and specters, and welcome back to Shivers. I'm in the library picking up some wonderful reading material in the hopes that any of it will provide us wonderful clues for how to proceed later on in the game. Currently reading In Search of the Unexplained, the memoirs of Sir, Hub of Sir Hubert Windelnot, published by Swenson Books in Chicago, 1978. The Birth of Understanding. I had a... Pr oh, we're on page two. Okay. I had a privileged but unenlightened birth. I was the second son of Sir William George Windelmott, Earl of Runcorn. Runcom? I don't know. I think it's Runcorn. Because my great-grandfather, Charles Windelmott, was granted an earldom after he defended the king, the Windelmots have had a noble heritage to live up to. As was expected of a Windelmott, I went to all the proper schools and graduated with honors from Oxford. Upon graduations, I married Mary Elizabeth Worthington, a woman of title. Before long, the lure of the ancients proved too great for me. I found myself in Egypt, obsessed over the great knowledge they once possessed. Standing at the base of the Great Sphinx, I felt reborn as I whispered, as it whispered to me the mysteries of past. I knew then I must devote my life to bridging the gap between myth and fact, for sincere, I sincerely believe that all myth is based on fact. The Mysterious World. Okay, we have wonderful clues here. In 1938, I made a startling discovery. Similar... Oh, as you can see, we can... One and two, we strip to the second chapter. <laughs> Similar pyramids, equal to the glory of the great pyramids in Egypt, were constructed in parts of the world by civilizations that had no contact with each other. My paper on the subject gained me election to Eidenberg's Royal Society at the young age of 30. I did not express my true feelings in the paper, however, for membership was very important to me. I knew that some extraterrestrial being had inspired the construction of these buildings, and so I ventured into archaeoastronomy. Archeo the more I researched and visited these sites, the more convinced I became, yeah, I became that mortal man alone had not built these. As I spoke my findings, I was ridiculed and accused of hallucinations. I searched six years for proof of my beliefs. In four seemingly unrelated civilizations, I found the following pictographs, each one buried within pyramidal tombs. We have Peru here. We have Soviet Union. We have Pakistan. And we have China. You will notice that while the images from each location are in different order, they all contain what appears to be a flying saucer, a man in a helmeted spacesuit, and some sort of solar schematic. These similarities are too close to be merely coincidental. We move on to chapter 3, Professor Ridicule. I admit, dear reader, I am as guilty as anyone of desiring respect and fame. I was driven to pursue enigmas that science could not explain. Fame ca came at the expense of respect. Even with indisputable proof, I was ridiculed by my peers. I brought forth my colleagues' proof of the existence of beasts long ago thought to exist only in myth. In a tar pit in Turkey, I unearthed a creature that could only have been a griffin and was accused of fabricating it out of several prehistorical, prehistoric animals. In a cave in the Himalayas, I found a mummified creature with one eye in the center of its head and was denounced for having paid for f freaks of nature. In many instances, I was accused of being naive and falling prey to the tricks of others. Is it any wonder that I resigned from the Royal Society and came to America to search for academic acceptance? I sacrificed my marriage, my heritage, and my home to prove my theories and fulfill my dream. I dreamed of a museum that would house the artifacts I had collected where others too would see my vision. And that is the end of Wendell Knott's book, <laughs> The Memoirs. Alright, uh, nope, not this book. What's next? This book, South American Pictographs. Cryptographer's attempt at deciphering ancient... Okay, here's where we find everything we need to know. So this is a symbol of fire. Water, or rainwater, we have... Uh, it is easy to see the bee hovering over the beeswax. So this is the symbol for wax. Here's ceremonial ashes. Symbol for thunder and lightning. For reeds. Oh, cloth. Cloth of reeds. So this is metal. Okay, that tells me. The pot... And the bird mask, that's for the metal. So we, I have to find the uh, the talisman, and then I can trap that guy. This is for... T is for tree, and the glyph where he died creates dead tree. So I guess wood. Symbol for crystals. This is sand for symbol of earth. Symbol of stone. This was the... I believe this was the one that was on the pot for Windelnot. So we have... Stone has escaped. Symbol for jade. Symbol for burning water. 
it would be assumed that this would include petroleum products such as tar and oil. And that is all we have. Purple book. This is the last book, I do believe. I will double check everything, though. The solar system. We have Saturn, Mars, Earth. Mercury, messenger for the gods, god of commerce and science, protector of travelers, thieves, and vagabonds. Venus, goddess of love. Earth, symbol of Earth and wife of Uranus. Don't make a joke out of it. Mars, god of war. The planet was named Mars because of its red color. And that's all we get from that. So, yep. I do believe... Nope. Yep, that's all she wrote. So, nothing down here. I don't know. All right, to the left. Sometimes the wax XUP could be in these candles. Nothing here. Okay. Are you sure there's nothing up here? I can't. Hmm. Oh, I needed to pull the book. Oh, you have the T here, so that's for the wood XUP. Okay, so now I know it. It all makes sense now. Alright. Let's head outside of this. Lovely little... Oh. I haven't fully explored here. Okay. The items in this case were found in a Mayan ceremonial cave in British Honduras. The Jade Skull is one of the largest Jade items in the world. But there's no Jade Skull here. Instead, I just see a nice glass breakage here going on. To our right, we have this lovely guy, and a shibushki, and now we have our water running. Oh. Sorry, I got spooked. I heard the water start running. I thought the uh, I thought the water XP's had shown up. So let's take a look to our left. So as you can see, we just have the pottery, but there is no jade stone here anymore. Nope, not that way. Turn to our right, and here we go. Let's take again. They're in here, shall we? Okay, for a second there, I got spooked. I thought an XP was here. Let's find out the narration in this room. From a 60-foot giant squid that can pull a small fishing boat into the depths of the sea, to the two-inch poison dart frog that carries enough poison to kill 1,500 people. Nothing is stranger than the animal kingdom. Is it any wonder that the ancients worshipped and feared these strange beasts? So we're in the strange beasts room. We have a giant tarantula. Oh. Dr. Stanley Barlov, Mount Pleasant Drugs, Merrick Cow, Inhale Two Puffs. My mouth. Why would you leave your inhaler here on the floor? Look here. Four miles under the ocean surface while searching through the sunken wreckage of the British vessel HM, HMS. Sorry. Sometimes the uh, music here in this room makes me think there's an XP nearby because between the roar, the the animal roars and the thump 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 thump. This rare specimen of a starfish, profoundable, was claimed to have been found. <coughs> This rare specimen of the starfish, Profund Albi, was claimed to have been found. It was wrapped around the skull of one of the members of the crew. That makes it strange. The unicorn, found in many cultures, is theorized to have existed at one time but is now extinct. Marco Polo wrote about having, having seen unicorns in an area that is now Russia. The, this bronze metal statue was found buried in a tomb in Greece. So it's made out of metal, bronze metal, yep, so the metal XP can probably show up there. Okay, yeah, the tar XP, he's heading out here. I hate that guy the most. He's the one, he, he, he will block your progress, you absolutely need to take him out. Oh, we have a... This large spider is Therophos lepodi, or the bird-eating spider. Very big, nasty. I don't know about nasty, maybe nasty is the wrong word to be using. 
Weighing two tons, this nest built by a pair of bald eagles in Georgia is by no means the largest known nest. The nests of the Maui fowl of Australia are much larger, weighing over ten times as much. And here we have ourselves a little skull. What we, it's red. I do believe it's supposed to be blue. Let me double check that. We have our self Care to refresh your memory? Why, yes, I would. Uh, the museum brochure. Yep, it's supposed to be blue. Thank you. Appreciate that. So that. Uh, go back to playing. <laughs> so yeah, got the tar XP over there. I am not gonna mess my nose around here. This. Found in a tar pit in Turkey were the bones of an unusual animal that baffled pa paleontologists. They decided the bones were from three animals. The wings of a pterodactyl, the body of a saber-toothed tiger, and the head of a raptor. Never once did they consider the obvious and that it was a griffin, written about in ancient literature and now extinct. And when Whittle not when, when they mean raptor, uh, they mean it by the, uh, the giant eggs. <laughs> eggs, 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 eggs. I'm pretty sure what he means by what they mean by raptor is not uh, this way, please. The uh, to quote Jurassic Park, and even the word velociraptor, and even the word raptor means bird of prey. Well, that's not very scary. <laughs> All right, that's what they mean by raptor. They don't mean like a velociraptor or a Utah raptor or a demi raptor. The miscus, the miscalisosaur. I don't. Know. I forget how his name is pronounced. Its name is. Anyways, done with the strange beast room. We're gonna move on into the uh, the plant, the room about the plants. Next time. So until then, thank you all very much for watching, and ciao for now.